Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna start reviewing as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. It started a bit earlier. Uh, so you kind of lost the first team fight, it seemed. Yeah, there McCree killed I think two or three of us. I see. What kind of happened? Like, uh, was it a flank or? No, he just. I uh, I wasn't there at the start of the match. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I was there like one or two seconds delayed, and everyone just ran in, and the McCree just killed them. In. I see. Yeah, they didn't have a shield, so. Mm -hmm. So we get a first fire strike off there. There's a Kree going behind. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah You're not entirely and sure then... where to turn your shield, right? So annoying. Yeah. Because yeah. the McCree is always shooting from the side, and then yes. I should have probably uh, focused on the McCree till, because their team went back. Mm -hmm. There's a Kree going. It's a bit difficult because you do not have a Lucia from what I saw, right? No, you, we don't. Yeah. Kind of like the shielding angle you're holding right now. It's like almost perfect. Because you yeah. see, like, there's a Reinhardt to your, well, to the left corner there. Yeah. So, like, whoop. Uh, and then there's McCree to the right. If you, like, shield to one way entirely, you make it very easy for one of them to shoot you. Like, right now the McCree's got an angle on you. And if yeah. you would, like, fully turn to the McCree, then of course the others could just shoot the you. The Rhine. Yeah. Yeah, so if you, like, hold your shield kind of diagonally, it gives you two advantages. Mm -hmm. First of all, you can still kind of shield yourself and your team from the McCree. I can also peek around this corner with the camera mechanic. I don't know if you're very familiar with that, but... Yeah. Well, that could be a, a handy kinda. thing to kind of cover two things. Okay. So in this case, more already got picked off. Yeah, it's a bit difficult because um, like your team is standing behind you right now, and like in principle, you're doing a good job by like shielding up from the letting your team push through. But because there's like multiple angles of attack, it might be a bit difficult for your team to walk through safely. And if you would shield like just to cover the McCree angle at least, and you can make sure they uh, traverse quite well. So annoying. Okay. Yeah. He cut me off, stomped me, and cut me. Mm -hmm. And I shot at Hanzo. Alright, so your team is a bit uh, frantic, but I guess that it kind of happens in solo queue as well. Um, yeah. You lost your Moira earlier, but your Hanzo got a good like, pick off back. Uh, when your mm -hmm. Moira died, like, were you feeling comfortable to take that fight, or would you rather uh, have waited for a bit? Well, because we lost the healer, but uh, then I wasn't kind of comfortable. But when they lost the first like main threat of damage, I was like, "Well, I mean, we can still win this fight yeah. if we push the side here." Because their McCree was getting kind an aggressive alone. angle again, mm -hmm. so and the Baptist was uh, focusing him, and mm -hmm. so I thought that if we all focus the McCree down, then they don't have damage, then we don't yeah. need that much healing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of right, like, especially because Johansu got the pick off just now, it means that the fight is kind of equal for now, but your Moira will be back, like, much sooner than their Hunter will be, also with the shift uh, ability. That's kind of handy. Uh, like, when your Moira got picked up, it seemed that you were, not, like, a bit uncertain, but I guess it's gonna end up going quite well. We should die. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'm noticing in several of your swings is that you're not doing the camera, me like, mechanic. Are you familiar with it mm. or no? Uh, the, that you... Uh, Rotate your camera, but... Like... So I swing the camera with the swing, so yes. you get more. Yeah, I've uh, I've picked on that uh, yeah. he, lately after watching some drain mm. reviews of main tanks back. Yeah. So I've picked it up, but I, I don't think in that game. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Then you're more familiar much. with it. Like if you rotate your camera, you essentially make the square kind of like this, although it's a bit exaggerated, yeah. if you will. And then you have like the extra. Yeah. Corner fuel. Well, that's definitely something that you could look to employ, Let's go there. Let's go there. especially yeah. around corners, because what you can do then. Is that you can like swing around the corner, not be hit, and then you can step back like when you've hit him, and then they can't hit you without like oh. kind of taking a lot of fire. We should die. If That's unfair. Mm -hmm. Taking, up, taking a, quite a bit of damage. Like um, like when do you usually decide to take down your shield and start swinging, and vice versa? Uh, well, I usually either try to look at a DPS reloading. Mm -hmm. Or when the other Ryan, uh, the other Zaya doesn't have projective barrier. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at enemy cooldowns. Do you look at your own HP as well or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So in this case, your HP got down to about 150. Mm -hmm. Is that like an HP level that you're comfortable with, or would you rather do different? I would r usually only try to swing. At 250 plus, but mm -hmm. sometimes I don't look that much on my HP. Yeah, okay. But it depends if the situation mm -hmm. is messy or anything. I see, yeah. I think um, in general, 250 is like already a bit to the Baron side. Like, preferably you don't want to take random poke damage, but if you're taking damage, then anything that you can take on your armor HP. So, like, uh, every HP that you have above 300 is like armor HP. Mm -hmm. 
uh, everything you can take there is not too big a deal. After that, I'll be a bit more careful. It's because you take the full broke to the damage and have a big ass hitbox that it might be uh, a bit difficult. 250 is still relatively safe, but it would depend on the threat, of course. Uh, like if the enemy has a Widowmaker, then the 300 HP is a pretty hard benchmark. Yeah. That shots, but in this case, like uh, the immediate threat wasn't there, but you still have to be careful because you were on 150 HP, and like mm -hmm. one McCree shot on a Lucio existing can be uh, enough. Mm. That was a risky charge. Uh, one thing I'm also noticing when you walk up over shield mm -hmm. is that you sometimes, and we're going to see this in the VOD as well, uh, when you walk up with your shield, you like hold your shield up all the way and you uh, just keep pressing forward and it goes quite slow. Right? Yeah, I should, I should start shield hopping more as well. Yeah, like um, it's in part it's like doing the hop, but also like dropping your shield in between allows you to like. Uh, cover more distance essentially, like surely your shield will be down for a bit. But what you essentially do is that you have your shield up, uh, you, or well sorry, you start on the ground with your shield down, you jump up and then put your shield up midair, but you keep the momentum from your jump and if you hop it through like that, uh, it means that you can cover a lot more distance, like, or in the same amount of time, or you can cover one bit of distance much quicker than you would uh, if you were walking up with a shield. So it just saves you some shield HP and some time. I'll charge in. Yeah, this charge is a bit risky. Yeah. Um, could you like explain uh, how do you usually like intend to charge and how you decide whether it's a good moment? Or... Well, in that in this moment, um, if we go back here, yeah, oh, if we go back to here, yeah, this is it right around here. So I thought I thought that um, that because their team was rotating around the point, mm -hmm. that if I now charge off the Rhine, then we can. All split him to the right side mm -hmm. and focus him down and then just clean up the rest of the team but he already stepped back to the right and then the Lucio just pushed me away yeah. so and I or also if I want to go for a charge I usually think or either either ask the Zaya if she has bubble or count the cooldown that yeah. she has bubble that's kind of right like in general uh, asking her is probably the easiest way because Hopefully, if they have a mic, and I hope your uh, off tank friend that plays Zarya does, then it should yeah, be like relatively uh, it's able it's to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, like uh, looking to split them up is kind of alright. Mid rotation, it's always a bit difficult with Reinhardt because when the enemy team is rotating, it oftentimes means that you're rotating as well, so your team might not be able to help you like instantly. In. in this case, like the Baptist could maybe heal you, but Moira was already essentially out of reach. Yeah, and she threw her orb as well. So yeah, earlier. Now it's going to be a bit difficult because now there's nothing to block all their damage coming in, as you see. Yeah. Hansa kill, kill Zarya kill. This is like a good block and flick though, but... Order lost for people by now. Yeah. And she's high charge, holy shit. That explains how she got two kills. We have to stay hydrated. Yeah. I like this bit of instinct though, like even though your shield management is like not entirely optimal, you did hear the Hans guild coming up and you decided to step away from the wall, that's like always a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. I push header. Yeah, once again I feel that you're uh, using a lot of shield HP and you're not really pushing with it. I don't know if you have a similar feeling. Yeah, kinda. Okay, so um, one of the things that you could look to do, like you have this pillar that you could kind of stand around. If there's no immediate threat, it might be worthwhile just dropping your shield for a bit or telling your team to get some cover. Because that's okay. basically like um, like a corner or a pillar, especially when they can the enemy team can't quite kill you. is kind of like a very cheap shield because you just don't have to spend any resources on it. And okay. like, if you do decide to like actually use your shield, you have to make sure that it has a specific function. So that could be uh, protecting your Hanzo or McCree when they go for a high noon or whatever, or just generally winning a shield war or pushing for a certain choke. But in this case, mm -hmm. um, we didn't really have a very clear plan, it seemed. We did get back to the uh, Graviton, which is good as Reinhardt, because you want to be able to block some damage. And this is kind of unfortunate, like, it's always it's always like a bit of a risky play to go for a Shatter when you're grabbed. But uh, I see the charm in myself as well. In this case, it's unfortunate you got booped up, not much to... Uh, the thing is, the one. no, I didn't get booped up, that's the new Reinhardt thing. Oh, uh, the new, uh, you get swung up, or is it just a normal jump? No, it's, the, the, thing, the thing is uh, that I saw is that if you use a Shatter in a Graviton Search, you can jump out of the Graviton Search with Shatter. Yeah, with the right direction and, movement. Yeah. So I hoped mm -hmm. that if, uh, that the Rhine was going to swing more into the Grav and uh, try to farm his old sure. more. So I thought that he would put a shield down, and then if I could jump out, it would 
like yeah. uh, confuse him, mm-hmm. but it says it didn't. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. Like um, when I played actively, that mechanic like just started, or how should I say it? But the last month that I like played really actively and competitively, that mechanic like got into the game, and it fucking shocked me as well <laughs> when I just jumped out of a fucking graviton. Uh, but in my experience, but you have to maybe I don't know find another video on it on someone who plays it more regularly. Uh, it's usually either complete backwards movement or complete forward. Like from the graphon search, then it's that directional movement. In this case, you were diagonal, so it's a bit difficult to jump out that way, especially because there was a wall nearby. Okay. Um, okay. One thing to keep in mind, though, the game has already been going on for like 65 percentage, essentially, so probably a solid 75 seconds, if not more. Uh, means that their runner probably has shutter up. Like, anyway, so always uh, be mindful of those, because you, in that case, you send a fire strike, and those are very risky to do when the enemy team has a shatter. Okay. Yeah. Right, this is kind of a good pin though, because now you actually manage to isolate them and they can really help one another. Like you could have mm-hmm. maybe when your Hanzo went full mad lad and fired in a fucking dragon strike from uh from, from the back line. You could have maybe decided to push them in, but it was a bit of a weird play, so I think. What you did now is still like good, it's it's safe and still capitalizing on the zoning, so that's nice. That's the same point. Give him extra yoink. Nice. Right. It was a bit difficult. Uh, it was a bit like a uh, very little communication on where we push, but we ended up kind of uh, screwing the point at least. Uh, this was like a good moment with the swing where they can use that corner mechanic again, or just a rotating mechanic. Yeah. Would have hit him. Mm-hmm. Right, so we're forcing them back. Um, do you feel comfortable holding on point here? Uh, I would have rather pushed forward to the pillar at least because we had a baptist and we could have Further. put the lamp behind it. Further to the door. Like, just where they, uh, like, when they go from spawn, just where they, like, enter the building, essentially, that's the best place to hold. Because they're either pushing for the choke, or they're walking around which you, which you can see, and then you can meet them at the white door. That makes okay. sense. This is this is one of the charges where, like, I, I mm-hmm. press the button, and then instantly you regret it. Yeah. <laughs> I got the fire like, strike on the Moira, which is nice. But... Yeah, but still, it's such a stupid, like, I... It's a, a risky I charge. And, I did it, and I was instantly like, oh, shh. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. It's a, it's a bit weird. I just like saw... these are just classic Ryan mechanic as well. Um, yeah, I just saw the Ryan thingy go down, and then uh, and yeah. uh, the Zaya go down, the Zaya bubble go down, and the Moira die. And I was like, oh, charge. Let me let me do this. Yeah, well, let's uh, like quickly look at the charge again because the second time that the charge ended up uh, not perfectly. Oop. Are you moving it forward or is it my thingy buggy? I am not doing okay. anything. Okay. Okay, so we get this kill. Gonna wait until it plays out until it's unbugged. Mm, so here comes the Hanzo ult, just got dodging. Yeah, I don't know what he was doing or thinking. Just... Why is this thing so laggy? Holy hell. Okay, anyways, I don't know. we uh, are about to charge here essentially, right? Um, a couple things to keep in mind with a charge is that it leaves you very vulnerable. So, what are like two things that would definitely, like two conditions that you definitely want to meet before you actually start up charging? Oh no! All... Preferably, oh no. you would want to, you would want to keep the charge distance kind of short. Mm-hmm. Cause that way, at least you don't take like all the damage and not too separated from your team. Yeah, that kind of brings you to the second thing. Um, you want to make sure that you are still in, like a relatively safe position by the end of the charge. So okay. Preferably, that could be uh, oh, yeah, someone's coming in your room. Uh, you can answer that if you want. Oh uh, well, just a second. <laughs> sure, sure. It's good. Well, that was my parents. Oh, no worries. It's always great. It doesn't matter how often you tell them something, they still forget. That's alright. Like, uh, I'm not judging and I'm not in a hurry. And I also no, have it's uh, fine. parents, nah. so it's fine. But, yeah, <laughs> like, ideally, you want to keep the charge distance kind of short. That way mm-hmm. you are less exposed. But also, if you like, if you charge short, you almost always make sure that you're like, kind of safe within the realms of your team. Because if you're like... If you were like going past this Reinhardt, there's like five of them before you meet any of your own teammates. And well, maybe just yeah. lonely Hanzo. So those are like the two things that you want to keep in mind when you charge. It's best if you keep the charge distance uh, quite short. And yes. want to make sure that you actually end up in a place where you're still safe and where your team can still help you. And that's why like yep. the first charge, like from a minute or so ago, was uh, a bit risky, and this one as well. In this case, we end up living, but it could have very well gone different. And this is like yeah. a bit clutch coordination here at the end. Nice. 
Uh, the McCree flashbang was like yeah, uh, just a decent block. Uh, one thing that's like it's very nitpicky, and I think it might not be the biggest thing at this rank, is that you can also pivot your shield again to make sure the Moira doesn't walk in front of you anymore. <laughs> so instead of like f f facing it directly into the creek and once again take a bit of a like an angle on your shield, yeah, like it's a bit exaggerated maybe, but then you can make it so that the Moira is still uh, under no longer shield, or you tell your Moira very loudly to actually get behind your shield. <laughs> Oh wait. Now I make a dumb decision. Yes, I know. I... Yeah. The so idea is, is the idea is pretty shatter. okay, mm -hmm. but the thing is, I showed myself, and mm -hmm. then I went back. Yeah, I know. and it was the dumbest thing possible. Um, see, like, there's a couple things that I always find a bit risky. First of all, there's an environmental pit, so I don't want to go there. Yeah. But also, like, if you want to go for a flanky shatter. Can maybe hide, even hide behind the wall, like where you're basically charging oh, it right now. Can maybe hide here or here, and it's probably safer. And even if, if you were like, already there, they would have yeah. Saw me. But even if you don't like get a flank shatter, they have to push through this, right? Like if your entire team pushes up to like around this pillar, around this choke, they have to kind of push through it, and it's not ideal for them. Yeah. And like, um, there's like first of all, there's the environmental pitfall, which is a bit risky. But on top of that, like you can't really see them coming until they're actually like, in the face of your team. That would be awesome. Yeah, this is a bit risky, especially when you can hear the roller skating coming. But um, like also you didn't have like any view on them until like actually pushed completely past the choke, so it was a bit risky in that sense. Yeah, you can kind of see how we could uh, see it with relative ease. Kinda. I'm coming back. Good job, guys. Sorry, one. It's good that we're getting yeah, the fight clutched. After I made dumb decisions. Free high ground? Yeah, you got me? Up, up. I don't know why I speak with accents sometimes. It is really weird. It happens to me as well. Like, especially when I've been talking to Dutch people or people that are not, like, fully well, fluent yeah. in English, it gets a bit difficult. <laughs> so for me, if I play with someone who has an accent, okay, I kind of adapt the accent sometimes. And yeah. It's, it's very natural. It happens to just about everyone. Yeah. Um, one small thing is that, like, when your team is looking to push up to the choke, like, one thing they could do is either join them and help them out, mm -hmm. or if you're, like, not able to help them yeah. in that sense, you need to tell them to get back. Like, in this yeah. case, uh, maybe you could push up, but, like, if you, for whatever reason, feel, like, uncomfortable pushing up, you can say, Moira Hanzo, get back. Nice, I I no, I probably should have. Yeah. Okay, like, in the uh, other round, you're going to, do, like, a, you're going to do a very good job of communicating, so we'll uh, see some things there. But it's definitely something you can always keep in mind. Unlucky. Mm. Nothing really too much here. Uh, like, it's a bit unfortunate uh, you lose the mind game, but it's not really something you could do too control. much about. Like, there was a Zarya bubble going on, and he nice put a shield, but he doesn't do it that often. Or after he hit a shatter. Nice, they probably yeah. Want, yeah, let's, let's go. They did end up losing Aura, sorry, winning this round quite well. That's okay. nice. Uh, I'm gonna go Winston now. Any yeah, questions I'm on this round? So far? Second. Okay, yeah. um, yes. Do you see the, the chat in the Q? Yes. Uh, um, okay, okay, okay. I have it on I full see. screen. Uh, what's in the chat? Hold up. Uh, I'm just talking into there, and you can pick up if you think it's necessary. Okay. Uh, shit. I think it's the easiest way instead of me just talking here. So Could you it. um read it out loud? Because it doesn't like go back to the chat room very easily for me. <laughs> what is it now? No, it doesn't. No, no, no. Uh, because uh, at the moment uh, where you went for the flanking shatter on the left side, yeah. the the whole point on that map is you want to hold them in the choke point because it's yeah, hard yeah. for them That's to get true. through. Uh, if you go for a flanking shatter, you kind of give them the choke point, which yeah, mm -hmm. is, yeah, that's what I uh, in the end agree it makes on. it easier for them. <laughs> I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shut up again. Yeah, no worries. You can always uh, intervene however you like. Uh, da -da. Now we need to actually F5 this one because I don't think it wants to do it quite well now. <laughs> I okay, now it's seen the ch showing the chat room again now, yeah. but yeah, you can always just uh, interrupt it with a microphone. That's fine, Bob. Oh, key. Don't remind me of that. Oh no, that's gonna happen. Um, I already re reviewed it. Don't worry, I will ban key for you, Kappa. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, I'm gonna... Okay, so we're... Whoop, I gotta rewind this comp for a little bit. If it will allow me to do so. Can we maybe get an Evo? So we're playing... That'd be okay, we're playing McCree, Hanzo? Oh. Uh, Baptiste mm -hmm. Moira, who's gonna swap to a brig, and then Zarya, who's later going to be playing Roadhog, if I remember correctly. Can also stay Zarya, yeah. kinda works, mm -hmm. but, you know. So, um, what is, like, your thought process on picking Hammond on this map? Like, surely there's the bridge, which is definitely fun. 
Mm, well, uh, that and also the huge tower in the middle gives a good point where you can grapple from. Mm -hmm. um, I watched uh, Hard Blue, I think yeah. it is. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so I watch him a lot, and he had a stream where he explained a bit of uh, great, like just generally good maps on him, and, mm -hmm. and uh, this was one of them. And he showed some good grapple spots, yeah, which I didn't use one of them in this match, but that's okay. Usually should have. Like, um, um... And I also thought that if we would have changed up the comp, I wanted to go for a dive comp here, but my team didn't really yeah. pick up on that. Mm -hmm. I asked for a diva, and that's still kind of. Did not happen, yeah. but uh, yeah. Well, what well, kind of two things course. here? Like, um, like looking up a high rank streamer or like a contenders player like Hardlook can definitely be helpful. But like you said, I won't be too worried if you can't like mimic their rollouts because, yeah. like, for a reason, Hardlook is a four point six k peak player in yeah. contenders. Right? Like, there would be a difference yeah. between me and Bob and him as well. <laughs> That's like yeah, uh, totally fine. But you can definitely like, still learn from it and just see some common habits and see if you maybe uh could like adjust a few things. Yeah. Um, as for your own like team composition. I think it's good that you mentioned like dive because like Hammond is like more of a hero that works well with quite very mobile heroes or heroes that can capitalize off of his uh, pile drive. I feel like there's more scenarios. In this case, the map is kind of favorable. Um, but just having one diva, I think, would not have been enough. I think the Hanzo is like a decent yeah. synergy, but the McCree is maybe not so optimal. And neither is more the Brigid. The Brigid, yeah, it's a bit uh, one cable. Yeah, but I also thought that if I go Reinhardt now for Desire, mm -hmm. I will get bullied by every boop they have. Because yes. they already had a Lucian the last one, and I kind of had a True. feeling that... On and you uh, don't have a Lucius Reinhardt, Reinhardt, which is already a fucking rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially on places with bridges. Yeah, too oh, many of them. But wait, you can't... You, listen, you can play Reinhardt, but then you don't go bridge, for example. Yeah, it, it, go wide. It yeah. really doesn't, doesn't go what you want, and you need to fill in. Uh, right. You can always go right side here. On yeah, one hand, yeah, but uh, Tunex can play like multiple tanks, so like uh, you can also play Winston, which we'll see like later on in the map. So that's ah, okay, uh, definitely good. Okay. So yeah, like it is optional to still play like Reinhardt on this map. Out of like, it, I just think it's not like optimal, even though it's optional. Especially if you have like yeah, uh, more dive is better, players. dive is better and more fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it would have probably been better to play Reinhardt with my team here, um, especially when not looking entirely at sure. Like maybe a bit, but uh, then again. It's already a bit difficult to uh, really get this comp to work. Like, I think Zarya Hammond still have, like, a decent synergy together. Like, it's definitely not top tier, but I think it can work quite well if you set it up correctly. And you also still have your Hunters to combine with both your Pile Drive and with your uh, yeah. Zarya's Grab Delta. So it's still, like, some decent synergy. Yeah. And uh, oh, Bridget, uh, not Bridget, uh, the Bob, Bob Old can also work with the sure. Pile Drive. Double slam. Well, right. So... They have a Hammond Farah. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. You're really adamant about going for this page. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh no. no oh, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to watch it quite yet. I'm just going to build up the hype. The way, the but uh, when the you see their Hammond Farah, you know there's already two hers. You're probably not going to boop off. And you know that they played Lucio last round, right? Yeah. So, so sorry. So are you expecting a Lucio again? Yeah. So if they have a, like two very mobile heroes and a Lucio that will score the rest of the team, and you do not have a Lucio. They'll probably pass a yeah. bridge before he can really uh, make something happen. Yeah. It's a bit risky. Like, uh, I understand you still kind of want to go for the play. I think by now you could have maybe like gone, oh, yeah. gone for one if you wanted Hammond. But especially yeah. when you see them all pass, oh. like, yeah, this is too late for a boop, for a knockout. Mm -hmm. So, da -da -da. And this is a bit unfortunate, but, uh, like, looking at how we have Hammond's ability with Why am I... both team okay. comps, well, your team is also in the back. Uh, but how would you look to get value out of Hammond in this I case? I also went back there, which is dumb. Your team? Nice, thank you, As in, like, that your team was dumb for uh, turning around that much, or? I don't quite catch it. Okay, anyways, um, the tunics. Can you hear me, Toon, or...? Yeah, sorry. Ah, there we go. Um, so if you're playing a Hammond in this case, right? Like, how mm -hmm. are you looking to get, uh, like, your value? Like, what abilities are you looking to set up with your team? Oh, I... The most part is just making space or booping the supports, and... Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, the thing is, I wanted to make the tanks pull attention away from their support so the Hanzo has a better sideline on them. Yeah. And also if I pile drive into their team, that's the thing with Hanzo uh, that I wanted to play Hammond, is 
that if I pile drive into them and knock them around mm -hmm. or knock them up, they're go he's going to have a easier Fine time shooting, shooting them. them if they're in the air. Yeah, so definitely like the uh, pile drive synergy with usually it's like spam heavy heroes or insta killers, so like Widowmaker, Farah, Junkrat, Bunzo. Like uh, that's where the pile drive works really well, but one thing you have to keep in mind then is that you don't want to roll like in front of your Bunzo too much. Mm -hmm. and in many cases, you also need to kind of save your grab look to set up the pile drive because on a map like uh, Lijung Gardens, there isn't really that many high grounds for you to sit on and kind of camp until like the opportunity presents itself. So I'd say like definitely if, if you want to play like that, you want to play a bit more uh, reserved almost, especially because they have Diva Hammond, they'll probably look to go onto your back line, like you just saw, and they also have Lijus that are very quick at doing so. Um, so one of the things you could maybe look to do is do a, like a counter pile drive, if that makes sense. So wait for their Hammond to knock you up, and then when you're up in the air, you pile drive down instantly when he's still like in his ball form. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it's something you can like uh, look to kind of do. This is a good pile drive though. Like you don't get the immediate follow up on damage, but you get like a good bit of damage, a good bit of crowd control. Mm -hmm. Right, and now we have to kind of actually make a, a target selection though. We did end up getting Demora and she did really uh, like move around too much, the so tracking her was quite easy. The initial yeah. rolling around is like okay, but it's a bit difficult to see like who the team or who you were going for kind of, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you, like uh, what was your own interpretation of this or like uh, what was your own plan behind it? But... Well the plan was just annoying them, trying to get them like mm -hmm. split up and trying to open gaps for my team on especially my DPS to mm -hmm. exist in. Yeah. Well, like, uh, opening gaps for a team is, like, kind of fine, but one thing that sometimes happens with a lot of Hammond players, it's not really, like, too badly with you, but they look to create, like, a lot of space. But mm -hmm. one of the things to keep in mind is that the only space that you really want to create is that which is relevant for a team. So, like, mm -hmm. if you're, uh, I don't know, like, going to the high ground near their spawn, that's not really, like, relevant space to take. So splitting them up is good, but one of the things you want to keep in mind is how can my own team follow up on the space I'm creating. Okay. And sometimes it seems like uh, it's a bit frantic and a bit on different levels and like in, on different places and it's a bit uh, troublesome to see how your team could immediately benefit from your space creation. Okay. Like it's going to be a bit difficult with these teammates because they're not very vocal. Oh, that was yeah. The first point. But it's definitely somebody you could uh, like, I don't know, either organize yourself with saying like, hey Hanzo, I'm not going to into you. Something like that. Or mm -hmm. just ask them like, hey, uh, how can I not come in for you? You're going to live. It's okay. Yeah, I'm not super like familiar with Hammond grapple mechanics. I know Krill will probably be able to help you out with Hammond uh, a bit more. Cool. But it uh, it will take a decent amount of practice from what I've gathered. Uh, yeah. da -da. I don't I don't look to play Hammond that much. I think yeah. the, uh, that my ha Winston is probably yeah. Winston and Orisa are probably well Winston Orisa and Reinhardt are on the yeah. same level for me, and Hammond is kind of yeah. less. Kind of same for me. Um, yeah. In this fight, though, went on for a bit. Uh, we lose some people, like, relatively early. Sorry for rewinding this again. <laughs> no, it's fine. But yeah. Um, I get lucky there that I get booted up by the Pharaoh. Yes. Sorry, Wait, what? I might have been wrong, but at no, least there's a Hammond in your back line. Mm-hmm. No. Right, so we lose one early. We lose two early. They use an ult. And they pass the bridge free down. Now we have to, like, kind of see what we do. Um... Okay, four down. Do we just look to stall or do we look to turn it around? I'm pretty sure I should have just turned around or just stalled a bit and then turned around. It was one of those two, yeah. So Especially true. when you got knocked like out, it was pretty yeah. clear. Like, you're not gonna stall too much. I didn't really. I I don't know why you said all. Yeah, at it's all. unfortunate. Oh, yeah, like this escape now at 20 HP is just uh, oh, a tad too late. Not gonna happen. <laughs> if a Rodok now. I'm gonna go with but just like me, you're going to be a bit more comfortable on Winston, so that's going to be uh, good stuff. And I have a better team as well. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you get your first Hunter Dragon in, get him. Nice. Nice one. You get knocked back. Uh, one thing I immediately noticed with these two jumps is that you um, take like a gracious amount of time to actually set up your jump, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, how comfortable are you, like, are you with flicking your, like, your jumps? Well, the thing is I play on kind of a low sensitivity. Mm -hmm. On all heroes, I play on 108, uh, 1,800 DPI and two in game, mm -hmm. and on tanks and Genji, I play on two point five. So it's kind of should be possible still. Yeah, it's not kind of 
Yeah. And still, and still, I feel uncomfortable with some flicks, yeah. especially with like mm -hmm. girls like that. Big mouse pass. A big mouse pass. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, can, can I, like... I play Lucio on 1600, 1.75. Oh, okay. Well, and I, I have play, no uh, problems. Yeah. It's just what you're used to. Yeah. Yeah. In my case, it's all heroes on 1200 DPI with four in game, which is kind of in between the two sensitivities that you mentioned, and on the. It's yeah. probably just getting like getting it locked into your muscle memory. So what I'd recommend you do, like especially if you have a high ground heavy map, like uh, Anubis or Gibraltar, just try to like get really apt at flicking in between different high grounds. So if you're standing on low ground, like flick and press shift mm -hmm. instantly onto the high ground. That's like a good practice because it will. I don't have it on shift. Uh, your jump key. On C. On C. Okay, interesting. But um, yeah. At least you can still like practice. I imagine you still have your mouse in your hand, so <laughs> I reckon that's not changing. But yeah, then you can just like press your jump key, but then you can like make the motion uh to like look up and set up your what's it called? Like your jump. You can kind of yeah. set it up instantly so you don't have to like look at it and wait for a bit. You can just do it in one mm -hmm. flick and that's going to be yeah. uh, very efficient. Right, here it's time to uh that shield's not gonna last long against barrage, but uh, I think we're kinda looking for now. Half. I'm gonna die to you guys. Yes. And I need to ask healing and something else. Oh mm -hmm. shit. It's a bit unfortunate, like, I felt like you, um, because you had that your, your wasted, shield. Yeah, like, because you could have maybe helped your, uh, one teammate out as well. Yeah. Your Ash. Well, that and also the shield was wasted because, uh, I placed it, like, half between oh, yeah, the bomb, that. but not, like, cutting the bomb side off that well. Yeah. Because was, the middle um, thing already, already it was did bit, better. Uh, unfortunate. Was one. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you familiar with, like, the three different stages of Winston's jump? Like, uh, height angles? The you mean that at the start you can control it with the uh yeah. like with different yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. be because good. in this case you kind of looked uh like after Sanzo if you when you want to make like a very low jump so you want to jump underneath a doorway down. for instance look down. look down yeah it makes it a yeah lot look down easier. and you can press the S key as well so um the S key makes it so you jump like shorter but it doesn't shorter. really make your jump uh lower by any means oh okay yeah so if you just like look down that's like uh, Enough to make it through that doorway, essentially. It's a bit okay. difficult, and I can look to rotate, uh, like a bit during the jump as well, to make sure your head is not entirely exposed. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, hitting your head against the doorway is not optimal. <laughs> no. One HP. If I would have, if I would have jumped onto them and had to jump uh, the damage uh, connect with the Hanzo, he would have died as well. Yeah, and you also have to melee cancel. Um, you're familiar with that to some extent, or no? Does it does it actually? Because uh, I think some I don't know who said it, but uh, I think XQC that it doesn't even like doesn't even work. Um, from my experience, it still works, and I played Overwatch two days ago, <laughs> so uh, oh. it definitely still. Works. I don't know because because uh, I think he he said that if you melee in front of it, that you're gonna have a cooldown between shooting and you do the same damage. Um, or if you do it suboptimally, amount. Basically, yeah. what the entire idea is, like when Winston jumps, um, he always stagnates a bit just as he lands before he like actually starts dealing damage. Right? Mm -hmm. If you like right before landing, like press your melee button. Mm -hmm. uh, the melee button has an animation, but the effect is immediate, so it doesn't have to finish the entire animation. Does that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. And what it basically does is, when you like you've pressed uh, what's it called your melee button, then you mm -hmm. land, and then the landing like animation interrupts your melee, but you still get the damage. And because you've meleeed, you, like you can't have the normal stagnate animation. So if you do it like okay. almost frame perfect, then you can still like get an extra bit of damage in. And it's especially handy uh, for our, like first engagements. So if you're jumping on a Hanzo who's full HP, then you do 50 damage, and they have like 0 0.6 second stagnation, and then you start zap the, like Tesla cannoning. But if you actually mm -hmm. have the melee cancel, then you do like 80 damage on impact essentially. And you get to uh, like zap immediately, so it's very quick to uh, start up an engagement. It's also good to finish people off because if something is like say seventy HP, that melee cancel will make the difference between a kill or whether he lives and gets some healing. Mm -hmm. So I would say like look to practice it. It's basically when you jump, you want to make sure right before you land, like almost a frame before it, you want to like actually smash that melee button and get the damage in. And you'll probably mm -hmm. start noticing the difference in uh, it's called in general DPS. Okay. On a side note, good calls here. Like you're saying, the hunter's one, he gets finished down. Say the hunter's half, he gets finished down. Say help your McCree, and we're coming back with love. Like these good are job. really good calls. Um, you mentioned that you played in some teams. Like I don't know if you're still yeah. doing it. This one, um, this one, no, not really. Or, not really anymore. Okay. Well. Usually the two no, most vocal uh, roles are the main support and the main tank. Yeah. So you're definitely filling that role as a main tank now. Definitely. Uh, like I don't know how comfortable you are with it, but definitely try to keep those things up because it helps your team a lot. 
and if you ever like intend to pick up team play again, it will be very handy. Well, I'm kind. Of, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, calling, but uh, yeah, I just don't play teams anymore because uh, I can't have school and I have to wake up pretty early. So yeah, fair. Well, maybe can't. still uh, bring in the habit in solo queue. Yeah, yeah. or just mm -hmm. with my friends. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. Um, partners. There's going to be a couple things that I will notice. Right, just let it play for a little bit. In this case, like of course, you cannot uh, do the melee cancel one landing. Thank you. Um, oh no, the, they have Reaper now. Watch one else. thing I can see, like also in the engage mode against you, is that mm -hmm. you use your Tesla cannon before you can actually deal damage. I don't know if you've noticed it as well. But... Not really. Okay, uh, from what I see often, like when you jump in, you already have like your uh, your mouse one essentially, you're already like yeah. holding it down, so you get your Tesla oh, cannon yeah. with nothing in range. Um, and so you it's basically it. just wasting ammo. Yeah, you're basically, uh, in that case, you're kind of wasting ammo, yeah, but it's not just like wasting ammo. Um, it could mean that because you wasted some ammo, you get caught reloading in the middle of an engagement, which you could have maybe oh, won yeah. otherwise. Uh, one thing I noticed as well on the, on the Lucio, and we're going to see that like one or two more times during the VOD, is that you kind of miss him, and uh, like aiming on Winston is a bit of a, a, bit of a meme almost, it seems. <laughs> but uh, still trying to keep your crosshair somewhat close to him is definitely good. Uh, the total width of Winston's Tesla cannon is 6 meters within 8 meters range. So okay. you have to like kind of get a feel for that, um, but definitely try to start zapping them when they're in that eight meter range and not sooner. Otherwise, you're wasting ammo. Uh, and also, like Alusha, you just have to track him perfectly. Or uh, sorry, not perfectly. You just have to track him alone. But uh, if there's multiple targets, try to line it up so that they're all in that six meter cone, essentially, so that they all okay. uh, take damage. You kind of see by how the uh, Tesla kind of like Reaper's connects. This one. Yeah. The jump on the Reaper was a bit risky, but well. seeing as you were winning the fight, it's kind of okay. Kill Genji. Try to kill Genji, try to kill Genji. Watch out for the Hammond rolling on points. Yeah. Once again, a lot of I'm Tesla shooting cannon. A, yeah, I'm shooting a lot when that I That was essentially a full tank. One. And here we're gonna see it in a second, but yeah, look, you'll see... Of course you'll notice it when you, have, when you get a hit marker, but if there's multiple targets, you'll see the lightning beam connect. Like the best telltale. Yeah. Can't realize that in time, nice. One thing that you could look to do a bit more here again is uh, target calling, and if you're not really comfortable doing it yourself, nice. just uh, focus on whatever your team is focusing and tell the others to join them. Okay. Uh, also, if you go back to no, the... I'm, I'm actually... Yeah. Uh, you, you, I'm actually... Uh, you need to use your jumps. Every jump needs to be within... Uh, how with, a purpose. with a purpose. Yeah, with a purpose. Yeah. And you're using your jump here like two or three times in a row. Yeah, just kind of going just to the to... side. <laughs> here like... you could walk, but that's okay. Maybe you saw yeah. it. Well, you could fix Next, this with I'm good what? target focus. I'm, I'm using it here because I thought the diva was going around. Ah, I see. Well, it's kind of, once again, it's something that you can kind nice. of fix with uh, nice. with the target focus. Like, if you know and what your team is focusing or you know what you want to focus, then yeah. uh, getting the jump in is significantly easier. And also, uh, back to the back to the um, mm -hmm. calling. I'm actually pretty comfortable. I just, in solo queue, just sometimes don't do it for whatever reason. It's a bit difficult because... Um, it can be, it can feel like a very ungrateful job because there's one guy on yeah. the line which will be an five silent folks, uh, but it's definitely yeah. a good habit. Like, um, I should put this, like a lot of people that I've like I don't know met through solo queue. There's quite a lot of people that aren't very comfortable in making calls, but quite a lot of them can listen and follow up on calls quite well. Like okay. from my experience, of course there will be like I'm... people that just do nothing, but I do believe the best way to gain rank, and I'm like the proof of it because I played on a laptop and I made like top same Lucio, just making calls. It doesn't matter if other people don't talk, but um, you need to see like in real life when you have a football team and you have like uh, 10 very quiet players and one player calls everything. Your team is going to perform better than the other team if no one is calling. Exactly. Yeah. Even if only one people listens, it's going to make a difference. Okay. And all you need to do is like, you need to be, um, if you are more vocal every game uh, in like 100 games, you're going to get game rank eventually yeah. because the other team won't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's always my yeah. like. Um, Bob does it from Lucio. Like I also play on a gaming laptop, and I also gained a lot of rank for communicating. I'd like to think. Like in my case, I played a lot of main tank, and just to like kind of illustrate it. Imagine if one team is running dive, and the other team is running dive with a Winston who is always saying we're going for this target, and there's three people oh, focusing yeah. down a single target. Like that's a very efficient call rather than like uh, six <laughs> chickens running around without a head. Yeah, well, that type of stuff. But also things like uh, Wait, you, you both are playing on a gaming laptop. Uh, I don't know if he has a gaming laptop, Bob. Do you? 
No, listen, I got a PC now, but like for two months ago, I played on not even gaming laptop. I played like 60 FPS max, 50% render. And scale. you're both playing, on you're both gem. Um, so I haven't played Compen ages, but yeah, I did pick top 500 <laughs> I and I played on gaming laptop. Let's um, go, dude. No, 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 like that's the entire point. <laughs> it's not your gaming gear that decides how good you are. No, I know, I know, I know. I, I play Lucio because I only could play Lucio. The other characters I couldn't aim because I had like such shit, shit FPS. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> I have 120 pretty yeah. confidently, but sometimes oh. it just kind of drops lower. Dude, I and... played on 20 FPS in open division for a while. It was fun. Um, <laughs> and this case was kind of interesting. Like, you kept the Moira away, which is decent. It was a bit fortunate that the Genji, like, came across your path. But that is, like, I'll say by coincidence, it was a very good usage of Primal Rage. Just keeping no, the Genji away can be quite calculated. helpful. calculated. Very calculated. <laughs> and this thing is kind of right. Though. Like, I like how you're very patient with your jump until Lucian knocks you about. Uh, you have to be careful though, but you're doing a decent job of bubble dancing, so that's nice. And we get the kills. Okay, Hammond's rolling in, Lucio decided to take a bath. Yeah, this jump is like kind of okay for scouting, but I wouldn't recommend using the jump for it, I would just kind of peek over the bridge. Mm -hmm. I honestly thought that the Genji was w would go in harder and I could uh, jump behind him, mm -hmm. so I push him more in my team. But yeah, um, jumping on a Genji like there's two ways you can kind of do it. If he's very aggressive, he'll probably dive your backline, in which case you yeah. can just kind of play around your supports and walk up to him and kill him together. Um, alternatively, you could use your jump on him, but um, I would recommend you do that only when he has used his dash. Otherwise, he just yeah. Like, otherwise, you jump on him and then he just dashes back to whatever the hell he likes, and then well, <laughs> didn't really do much with that one. Okay, I wouldn't recommend dropping your bubble that early, especially against Winston, because it's uh, not per se needed for the Tesla cannon. Yeah. Again, using Tesla out of range. Yeah, it was also a bit of like an aiming issue, but you're doing well now. Mercy, 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 and you're focusing mercy, mercy, on Mercy down, which is good. Focusing on Lucius is good. Or it's gonna shift that Reaper is already fine. You can... Reaper ult. Reaper is probably okay. ult. Nice. Like, uh, it was good that you called his, uh, his ultimate is already used, but it's... It would be very good to call a shift, because okay, Reaper with a shift can be really pesky, yes. and Reaper, Reaper without a shift oh, is kind of just a meme, especially against the <laughs> Kriash. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's like a very crucial cooldown you can look to call. It's good. Nice. Mm -hmm. One final note on the Primal Rage there, you still had jump on cooldown, I believe, so... Especially if you're just, if you're just chasing down one target, you can look to Tethel Cannon a bit. Uh, jump in, melee cancel, and instantly do the Primal Rage, because then you can get the first swing again with a new jump. That's like a lot of burst okay. damage. Um, but yeah, in general, there's like a couple things, especially for Reinhardt and uh, Winston that I'd look at. Uh, firstly, like get to know the base mechanics of the of your primary fire. For Winston, it's mostly the range and the uh, the width, if you will, the cone. And with mm -hmm. Reinhardt, it's like the hitbox manipulations around corners and with camera turns. There's like some key things. Um, your engagements on Winston were like pretty decent. On Reinhardt, it seemed a bit unsure. Um, yeah, it's because I usually play with a person or a Zaya that really knows how. Because yeah. I usually on um, I I'm unfortunate because my friend uh, has a new account, so he's mm -hmm. leveling that up. So he, I couldn't play for him uh, with him for like some days. I would have mm -hmm. loved to record some mods with him because mm -hmm. uh, I usually play Ryan way more aggressive. I play really really aggressive, and mm -hmm. then I play really comfortably, uh, um, confidently. Play Oh, confident. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, confidently into the other Reinhardt mm -hmm. because I know that uh, his bubble timing will be on points. I'm not always sure with then and then when I'm in solo queue, I'm not trusting of like most sires to get that right. So, hmm. um, and is it like uh, because you're playing with your friend that it makes you feel more confident and like more aggressive, or is it like some of your own no, knowledge as well? No, it's because usually when I play with before this game, I think. This this recording didn't start like every time I start a game, mm -hmm. and I look at um, I look at what my like what the key people in my team play. Yeah. For example, I look what my off tank my is, main, what your support main, is. I look no, I look lo what my main healer usually plays and mm -hmm. what my off tank usually plays. And mm -hmm. this guy didn't play a lot of Zaya, so I didn't play as aggressive as I, as I would have probably written. With a Zaya that has a bit more hours under his belt. Yeah. One of the things that you could um, like maybe look to do, I think it's definitely good to have like a duo queue partner or just a friend to play with and uh, go through the ranks together, hopefully. 
but try to yeah. kind of uh, recognize as well how your uh, like how your uh, how your synergy works together. Because if you know like how those synergies work and can learn to recognize someone play style, uh, it means that you'll probably have a better time like synergizing with random teammates as well who might not even always play Zarya. Like uh, like I said, playing with a friend is good, but try to understand as well how it facilitates one another, because then you can uh, well, get better at that, but also you can adapt to different situations, that'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah, uh, so yeah, the base mechanics of the weapon, kind of discussed that. With Reinhardt, it seemed like your engagements were a bit um, were a bit uncertain. As a general rule, playing around corners and chokes is always good. So try to like get a feel for the map and like what the most relevant area would be. Uh, for most first fights on King of the Hill, it's going to be the objective. Surprise, surprise. Otherwise, there's always like a couple pretty standard areas to hold. So look, so like, uh, kind of fortify yourself around those, and be sure to like play very disciplined with corners because it just makes sure you do not have to waste your shield. And then with Ranard as well, you can use the uh, like jump and shield mechanic to make sure that you do not waste as much shield and you can cover distance much quicker. That's nice. Um, I think yeah. those are like some general tips. Like your communication, it seems uh, like definitely fine if you uh, like put a lot, like more hours into it and like start doing it like consistently. I think that would definitely help you out of all help your random teammates out who might not always. Um, I don't know, be fully on par with one idea. I think those are like uh, a couple key things that I'll pick out. I don't know if there's any questions okay. from you or from anyone else who was watching. Um, well, is there is there certain um, mechanics or certain things except of Winston's Primal that I can or should try to get at better at like mechanically? Um, because I it. like primal. I know because primal juggling is a thing that I already. Yeah, like it's definitely something. Um, primal juggling is really nice, but it's not the immediate priority. I would say, like, uh, it's definitely something for higher rank Winston's. But I think if you um if you get to know your primary weapon a bit better and you make sure that you're a bit more efficient with your jump, then you can definitely get some more work going with that. So I'd focus more on the like default abilities: so your jump, your shield, and your uh, skull, and just your weapon. And making sure you get like very apt at those, and then the primal rage juggling, like it's very nice if you can do it, but it's not your immediate, um, your immediate concern, if you will. Is there any way to train things like that in custom games, or um, is it just a gameplay and knowledge thing? Like, if you want to practice the mechanics specifically, uh, you can definitely load it up in a custom game. Like, uh, I don't really practice with custom games that much myself, but if you just Google them on the internet or ask some people around in other discords. There's like primal rage juggle things where Winston's primal rage lasts for like one thousand or three thousand seconds. You can just juggle like immortals and yeah. I'm doing that. I'm already doing that. Yeah. But I mean, I meant the like the distance thing around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what you could maybe do is just load up Gibraltar, um, like mm -hmm. put jump on like basically a zero second cooldown, and just practice flick jumps like from one high ground to the other, from uh, uh, okay. from high ground to low ground to a certain like health pack, and then skid out alongwards or from low ground to high ground. I think that could be a good okay. practice. And um, I think, like, like your shield was, like, decent at times. It started off a bit rough at the start with the Diva Bomb, but you kind of looked to uh, redeem yourself towards the end. Like, towards the end, your shield usage looked kind of good. But I think you'll get a much better feel for your shield usage as well when you get your uh, primary fire and your jump down. I think those will help quite well, because then you know exactly what you're going for and how you're going to reach it, and then the shield just kind of flows along naturally. Okay. Anything else, or...? <laughs> Um, How is was there... the shield management with Reinhardt? Um, I it was not. It, but... it was not fully uh, optimal. Um, like I said, it's handy if he plays a bit more around corners because that just saves all the shield. And also, uh, like being sure when to engage and uh, not walking up with your shield constantly, but just like jumping in between to save the uh, the shield HP and to cover distance a lot more quicker. I okay, I didn't see, but I think that's the most important thing with Reinhardt of mm -hmm. the the thing you see going wrong the most. Uh, in a sense, yeah, it's also because it's a very relative measure, if you will. Like, mm -hmm. um, like with charging, you can say, like, okay, yeah, that was a bad charge. There's, like, five enemies around you. With shield management, it's always a bit more delicate, so it's always a bit easier to criticize it as well. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely something you could look at with just good corner holds and good, uh, like, jump mechanics. Okay. Is there um, ways, like, is there uh, any ways that you can um, try to except making the right calls and being uh, right that mechanically, is there any way to get better or climb, especially in competitive? Um, so outside of like calling and outside of uh, like your own mechanical performance. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, the one step in between the two is game sense, essentially. Getting very knowledgeable mm -hmm. about the game, because then you'll know what mechanics you need to pull off, where you need to stand so to make so to make it easier for yourself to get those mechanics going, and you'll know what calls to make. Okay. So, uh, I think game sense kind of ties in between. Uh, for shield management, I'll just briefly touch on it. Like, um, it's very difficult to say, like, oh, this is, like, good shield management, and only this, because it's so, like, big and abstract, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple things that I could, like, I guess kind of give you as a tip. Um, you only, only want to, like, take relevant damage on your shield, you don't want to just take random poke. And I would say relevant damage would be something that forces out a cooldown from your team without you wanting to do it. So you don't want to just we take a shit ton of poke and force your honor to use nade on someone. Uh, of course, you need to make sure that no one dies. So if there's a sniper, then you definitely want to block that. Or anyone of your teammates is on low HP, they need to be sure to shield them. And anything that has like a status effect, like a uh, hook or flashbang or anti nade, you need to block those. I think those are like some of the key things. Like uh, it just comes with a lot of practice, and it's like it's very hard to get a perfect shield management. But I think there's like some good uh, guidelines. Always block off snipers, always block off crowd control or otherwise status affecting abilities. And protect mm -hmm. anyone that's low on HP and make sure that you kind of use your shield to make to ensure that you just use your own shield resource and not force out like anti-nade and relevant bubbles and all that type of stuff to get yourselves patched up. I think those are some okay. good guidelines to start with. Again, I, did, I didn't, didn't see it, but also important thing I think you missed is um, Reinhardt, when you recharging shields, don't ever use your shield in between. Yeah, that's true. It you puts see your so red. many Reinhards just clicking true. their right click a lot of times in between, which cancels the recharge, of course, which Indeed. might take a lot more time. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, like, especially in resting, uh, you don't want to like put it back up and uh, down again. Uh, sometimes in fights it is necessary, though. Like, uh, I would happily yeah, I stop my recharge yeah. to block a Rodok hook. Yeah, 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 that's true. But <laughs> in normal sense, your team will know when you are recharging, and they will play more passive when they see you are recharging. Okay. At least yeah. that's you, what you hope for. What you hope for. And otherwise you tell them. <laughs> but always you have to play for an optimal world. Or yeah. you hope at least. Okay. I think that covers uh, most of the things. Is this something that you can kind of uh, work with for a bit, Tunex? Or... I hope so, yeah. Right. I'll at least try to. Yeah. Like, um, I'm always happy to like take more reviews from you in the future. But I would say definitely seeing as you just had a review, like kind of work on what we went over for one or two weeks or something. And when you feel that like you've implemented some of the uh, advice or yeah. kind of play with it for a bit, you can maybe uh, submit a new review again if you like. Like it's not required, yeah. but if you uh, that would be like a good time to kind of do it. So we can kind of take step by step. I also uh, send in a water review for Rotok for Messiah yeah, for Krill. Krill, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will try to all or try to get a Zaya one because he plays Zaya the most. Sure, so sure. I'll try to see. Yeah, sure. If, uh, what things I do wrong, uh, yeah. what I can make do better there. Yeah. I mean, having multiple heroes <laughs> to play is always uh, fun. You can even get Bob to review Genji for you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm a huge, oh, I'm, I'm not muted. I'm a huge Genji. I was laughing. <laughs> yeah. In the pot game, yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. On my uh, Smurf account, I uh, came from like uh, well, 400 to uh, GM. 3,400. <laughs> it's almost GM. Thank you. On Genji, yes, yeah, I'm almost GM. Um, Hell yeah! A, a couple of things to keep in mind: if you're already like a high rank player, then uh, you always, yeah, have, always still like to have a lot of games in Genji and Lucia feel kind of mm -hmm. similar mechanics, even though I don't really play a lot of Genji. So you have some sort of baseline. The the bullet is the same. It's kind oh, of oh yeah, same. and yeah, uh, and flicking across while jumping over walls and doing 700 degree flicks. Easy. But then yeah. again, I believe like 66% of the game is like game sense. If you can play yeah. smart and you can get mm -hmm. your team to play smart, you will yeah. win more games. If your main tank, it's 80% uh, game sense, 15% communication, or however you want to distribute those two, and then maybe 5% mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> People it's always think mechanics are the most important thing. It's complete bullshit, unless yeah. you play with it. Right. Right. Then it's mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's like 200% mechanics on Widowmaker, but... <laughs> It's Who been, uh, plays uh, Widow? Uh, Shalidar does. And he has like uh, definitely good mechanics. Player. But he also mechanics has like uh, his mechanics are good, but he's also like just a smart player, so that's uh, mm, like a good again. Uh, yeah, decently smart. He's decently smart. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's mostly really good at mechanics. He's a yeah, Bob seems to really agree, uh, disagree yes. with no, smart but, player. I mean, <laughs> how should I put this? Um, the really, really smart players don't usually end up playing heroes that don't require a lot of, like, I should put this, like a lot of games, but they can shine a bit more on mechanics. 
Like my aim is absolute trash tier garbage. That's why I played a lot of Lucian Winston in the past and started just picking up main tank. I wasn't gonna play Whitebaker again. Either way, uh, I think I'm gonna stop recording yeah. here. Okay.